The agenda of this talk is uh, first an introduction to power over Ethernet. So the principle, the advantage, the standards, of course, uh, the hardware description, the power sourcing equipment, basic processes, and uh, the classification and the class detection. In a second part, I will talk about the support in PoE in Linux. So what's existing? Um, the Netlink UI, UAPI I have added uh, on the device to binding and why we decided to use the regulator API inside our uh, PSC API. And finally, I will talk about the future features uh, in the pipeline. So what is Power over Ethernet? Um, the aim of Power over Ethernet is to remove the uh, power cable, so to have only one uh, Ethernet cable that will do uh, the uh, that will uh, do the data exchange and the power capabilities. Um, so the some of the devices that are that could be uh, that are inst interesting in this uh, PoE is uh, like uh, this one, so a phone, a camera, or a router. And uh, PoE can be applied over two or three or four pair for uh, more power. <coughs> the advantage of PoE is, of course, uh, no more electrician. I needed to be an informatician and plug the Ethernet cable. So it's simple and flexible. There is no uh, external power supply needed, so no uh, certification, electrical certification, and of course it's uh, easy to reset all the power device as uh, you have the hand on the power uh, PoE controller. So the standards. Uh, it's, yeah, first it was introduced in uh, clause 33 in 2003 uh, with uh, 15 uh, watts. The power up to 15 watts. Then in 2009, uh, it's the power up to 25 watts with more type and class devices. Uh, this clause 33 describes only the PoE 2 uh, standards. Uh, it was first, there is a name change in the standards. Uh, it is important because it uh, it endure a, a choice uh, in the Linux development. So uh, it was initially named uh, Power via Media Dependent Interface, and then in 2022, Power over Ethernet. So the usual name that we that we use. And uh, in uh, 2018, uh, Clause 145 appeared for Power over four Ethernet pairs, which uh, allows power up to uh, 71 uh, watts and add more type on class devices. On a hardware uh, description, um, so it's a simple uh, power source that apply uh, source current on uh, one pair and a return current on the other pair, uh, and uh, it will do for two pairs if in case of uh, PoE4. As uh, Ethernet are designed to work over long distance, if the data and the power is on the same pair, we usually use an uh, isolation transformer to avoid any disturbance on the data. On the device side, it's called power devices. Um, the aim of the device is to support whatever uh, configuration that is plugged on the on the device from the PAC, so uh, there is a diode bridge to allow uh, whatever sense uh, plugged and whatever polarity. Uh, there is thing possible for single or dual signature if the output are combined or separate, but it's mostly combined. Uh, I don't talk about uh, dual signature, I'll, I really don't see it for now. Um, on the PoE standard, um, 
the, the, there is naming, uh, power interface naming, which is likely the RG45 port. Uh, it's just another naming for the, on the PoE side. So, as you might know, RG45 is eight, eight connectors, which means four pairs. And there is two possible cable, stretch through or crossover, which means there is different possibility choice, uh, polarity choice, sorry. Um, so here is a table with uh, there is a table with the alternative A or alternative B uh, pinout uh, configuration for the, the pairs. So uh, in all alternative A, the pair set use are one, two, three, and uh, six, and alternative B are uh, four, five, uh, seven, and eight. So it's only on the PoE2 case, because on PoE4, of course, all the pair are used. On the device side, it's not alternative uh, naming, but it's mode A, mode B. On the, um, the MDEX or BX uh, is uh, when the, for the crossover cable, also when the polarity is uh, ended. Um, what is the power sourcing, sourcing equipment uh, basic processes on the constraints? So when you plugged uh, an attendant device, you have to discriminate if it's a power device or not to not burn it, of course. Um, you, so you have to assess the basic power equipment, the conduct, the mutual discovery and uh, the power negotiation. Uh, and, uh, Often, uh, when a, power, when a device starts, it has a surge uh, power, so the PC should be able to support it. At short run time, um, a device could have a peak power, so of course the controller should support it. There is also a LLPD support, which is uh, which I won't talk about it uh, because it to its uh, not used for, for now, and it's really to modify the PoE configuration at the runtime. But uh, for now, it's just at, uh, it's a simple detection, so it can work without it. Uh, so we have to react uh, in case of uh, a PD drawing more power than it should. And um, also, we have to support uh, unbalanced load currents and uh, maxim, uh, limit the maximum power uh, that are, are dropped. And, and the, in case of uh, when the device is unplugged, um, we have to remove the power quickly enough to not burn uh, another device that is plugged uh, just after. Um, so the automatic detection is made through uh, register detection. Um, P the PSC will uh, made a few uh, pulse and to detect, detect the register detection of the, the rising edge of this pulse. And according to this detection, it can detect if it's a power device or not. Then it will do a classification. So. Uh, know the power that the device is asking on the so which class to to use so it use also a pulse events which is named class events uh, with more uh, voltage so 15 to 20 volt and it um, measures the current draw uh, variation on uh, this pulse and uh, there is also on type 3 or 4 uh, device um, there is a first long pulse, which is called uh, long class events. Long first class events. Uh, here is a table of, uh, of the different class detected according to the pulses. So one class from one to four are detected with uh, only two pulses. Um, then uh, class five to eight need the five pulses or uh, one long first class uh, event and uh, three more pulses. And with this, uh, and there is also class for dual signature. But as I said, there is, it's not used uh, anymore, but should not really used for now. Uh, with this class, there is uh, power uh, capabilities. So 
the default one is the 15 uh, watt uh, for the the class o zero. Uh, yeah. And then uh, it can up to uh, 15 in class three, and uh, the maximum is uh, so 99 on the EPSC side, 99 watts, and so which means uh, 71 watts on the power device side. So I, as you can see uh, on the left, so you have to check uh, the controller to know if they are compatible to the which uh, standard. If it's the more recent standard, which is uh, this one, AO203BT, uh, so you are able to support uh, class 5 to 8, but it's not, uh, you won't be able to support it. Uh, now let's talk about the software side. Um, so what's existing? Um, for now, there is uh, each um, PSC uh, constructor have maybe its own um, code. So there is also a POED tool for uh, switch that uh, Trend Projects uh, provide for the Dentro S uh, uh, OS. Uh, so this. Um, this tool is written in Python, and uh, so we need to install Python on Switch. It's not really important, but on embedded device, uh, we might not want to install it. And also, it supports only uh, one uh, PSC controller. Uh, so don't uh, uh, ask uh, us uh, through a call for a proposal uh, to support the POE in Linux. Um, so I also uh, work on a, another controller to have another point of view of what's what's existing. Uh, a TI, so on their side there is only a simple sample of code. So the same, you have to rewrite on your side and, uh, and it's not well written, a lot of comments with, don't, I don't understand why. Uh, on the Linux side, there was already a uh, pure DL that was merged in uh, 20 and 22, thanks to Alexis Jampel. PODA is power over data line. So it's kind of PoE, but for single pair Ethernet. Um, so uh, there is a lot of similar thing that uh, I will use for PoE, that I have used for PoE. The core, the UIPA, or the uh, STOL, uh, PODL support, and it already have one uh, regulator, simple regulator, uh, PODL regulator uh, support. But uh, the thing is that PODL is only using uh, one pair, so there is no such information as polarity pair sets, which there is in PoE, so only use PODL wasn't possible. So for now, it's in, it's, uh, I have sent the ninth version uh, this morning, uh, and there is already three patch of this series that is uh, merged, thanks to Jakub. Um, and this ser my, the series I have uh, sent, uh, so as I said, comport two uh, driver, one for the microchip one and the TI one. Uh, so let's look at a bit of the on the code. So it's quite the same, similar as PODL, as it's just really report uh, the standard uh, on the STOL Netlink API. Uh, so there is a control on status. So yeah, because for now uh, on the core only the basic are implemented, so just know what the state of the PC controller on the uh, tr uh, possibility to enable or disable it. On the device tree binding, uh, the, as I said, there is not much information, so only the PSC port number is needed. So, as you can see, uh, here is a description of the PODL controller, and only uh, the fundal to the, P to the PSC controller 
with the number of the port is used for um, PODL on this smart main line. Uh, but on my side, on the PoE side, sorry, uh, there is much more information. So uh, I have to add uh, a PACPI uh, subnode, which describes the, so the PI, the poor interface. As I said, it's like the RT45, but for PoE uh, standards. Um, so it, dis it uh, describes the player set use. So uh, in the, for, for example, in the Pi, Pi Zero, it, uh, describe, it's a PoE4 as there is a two player set use. This player set is relative to the channel of the, of the PAC, PAC. And uh, there is the polarity supported by the controller. A controller can support uh, several polarity. It depends. So here is, uh, here is an example. And then the, on the fifth side, it will uh, use the same PACS uh, parameter as PODL to not uh, to be like PODL and not uh, do really something different. So in this case, there is no second parameter to take the port as uh, all the information will be in the EPS EPI uh, node. Um, on the development, uh, we decided to use the regulator API. It was an idea of Olex example, uh, which is great because uh, PSC is like a regulator but for uh, internet devices. So it's applied power to a device. So yeah, it's really kind of regulator. Uh, but uh, this, uh, uh, the inconvenient is that it adds code complexity. So I have to use a wrapper between the PSC world to the regulator world. Uh, but the benefits are several. You can use the already existing API of the regulator, like power limit, voltage status, temperature limit, so on, CCFN, CCFS description. And also, there is um, some features from uh, PoE that can be interesting for a regulator, so like power priority. So on, uh, if a, a controller are, have its uh, current uh, available uh, decreasing, he have to shut down several ports, so ports, so you have to know which port have higher priority and uh, which port are lower priority, so which port he can shut down first. And this could also interest the regulator API in the Linux side. Uh, some code more, so just uh, how we uh, re register the regulator. So one regulator is re registered for every power interface of the PoE. So just, uh, I think it's a regulator of voltage and current here. Um, so yeah, the basic information of regulator to have it work uh, simple and uh, we just regulator it, uh, register it, sorry. And put it in the PI uh, structure. Uh, then, uh, when we when the fee, we'll get the regulator. So, uh, the P the POE port, uh, it will call uh, call the regulator get exclusive to get the regulator. So, as I said, it's really wrapper to to call the regulator uh, API inside the POE API. Uh, and it will check the if the regulator is enabled or not, and uh, save it in a variable. I will talk. So this variable is important because the regulator API uh, have, a, have a way to do the thing, and it's not applied to a PSE. For example, if we uh, get several times one regulator, it will just incre increase the counter. Uh, and if we put one time the regulator, it will just decrease the control one time, but it won't shut down the, uh, the regulator. On uh, the PSC side, we just want, if we get several time, if we uh, want to enable several time one port, it just does nothing. And if we enable, disable one time the, the port, it, it should disable it and not uh, look at the control to know if it can disable it. So yeah, I have to put an intermediate, intermediate uh, admit state enable, as you can see here, uh, variable to 
like grab grab it and uh, make it working. Um, so what's next? Um, uh, with this development, um, there is currently several drawbacks. So um, the currently as uh, is made uh, with PODL uh, development, the the power interface is get from the fee, which shouldn't be the case because uh, in reality the PO, the PoE is only uh, wired to the RG45 port, so there is we don't uh, the fee don't know about the the uh, power the PoE on if it's present or no. It's not uh, related to the TPSE. Uh, as it is a fee that uh, gets the the PSC power interface, uh, there is no, get, no way to get it from a network interface card driver. So when a, there is often in the switch driver, it don't register uh, the file. So so it's uh, not possible to get the PSCP as it is done in the file uh, call API. Uh, also, something is odd. The power interface is uh, the regulator provider and uh, and uh, consumer. Uh, it works, but it should not be the case. It's not really good to have provide the same provider and the same consumer. So, when we will have the uh, an Ethernet port abstraction in Linux, the consumer will be the port abstraction and the PSC PIs the regulator provider. And uh, Maxim, uh, my colleague, is currently working on uh, for extraction, so maybe we will we'll talk about it in uh, ELC in Vienna. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, also, the next feature of uh, PoE that is in the I forget the expression that uh, will happen uh, if the basic are accepted. Uh, so it's uh, the possibility to set and read the power limit. Um, the voltage status, uh, read the class, the failure reason, uh, configure the power purity as I said before, so to shut down, uh, which port to shut down if the available power is decreasing. Uh, and also a way to write persistent configuration, so a, rebo a reboot of a board shouldn't. Um, uh, we may may want to keep the same uh, PoE configuration uh, when the reboot happens. So demo time. It's not a real video. It's a video to avoid anything that goes wrong. Uh, I think if I. Did this? It's of course working. Okay, I can show it. Oh, it's not seen on my screen, so yeah. Uh, so here is uh, the switch I uh, worked on, which uh, have the uh, microchip controller. Um, there is a, a device that measures the voltage and the power of uh, of the PoE, and there is a camera that uh, will be plugged. Uh, to check that all is working well. So uh, here is a netlink uh, stool command using the IEN uh, function, uh, not function, but uh, scripts. So for now, the port is shut down. Uh, if I run a PSE get, we will have the information that the port is uh, off and the admin state uh, is set to two, which means the port is off uh, in, the, in the UIPA. Then we want to shut uh, to turn on the PoE port, so we use PSC set with uh, the right admin control value. So the we can see that the voltage uh, is now on. Uh, there is no current neither power because uh, nothing is plugged on the uh, on the PoE. So if I plugged no, for now I just uh, read the information of uh, the state of the port. So we can see that uh, there is a class detected. Uh, the admin state is now set to free, which means uh, it's on. Uh, there is also power limit, so it will be in the future uh, patch series. 
uh, and also uh, some status message, which also will be in the future of the series. Uh, then if I plug the camera, of course, the power will increase and we will see uh, voltage and uh, current on the measurement tool. And if I get the information from the PSC controller, you can see that the power is uh, have increased uh, and that's all. Yeah, that's all. And then uh, we can just turn off the the PoE port uh, with uh, PIC set and admin control to to value of two, and it will turn off all the device. So video works well. Uh, I lose my uh, and. So here is the reference and uh, all this work is sponsored by Dan Projects. So it's thanks to them that uh, we can uh, adding support uh, for PoE in Linux. Thank you for listening. So if you have questions or comments, uh, I'm not really fluent in English, I'm trying to, but uh, if you can ask really loud and clear, <laughs> it will help me. I know what time is it? Maybe you are hungry, so <laughs> that's why you don't want us. There's one? Oh, yeah. I still laugh if you walk over and over. It's okay. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity. Ah, oh. It's working? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, this this kind of stupid question, but uh, compared to like the data lines, why is PoE such a comparatively higher voltage? Mm, I don't know. Maybe maybe we to have more. Power. I don't know. I okay. don't really know. <laughs> I don't try to invent. Ah, okay. <laughs> So yeah, you have to to have a, a pretty high voltage in PoA because as you are doing uh, something like uh, uh, 50 meters and so on, uh, the voltage will decrease, and uh, so we have uh, you, you will have uh, less um, uh, power to 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 power your device. So. Uh, the, the 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 current uh, will be too too much uh, if uh, uh, if you have a, a lesser uh, voltage. Yeah. So great great talk. I'm Thank super you. super stoked to see this in the kernel. I uh, have a couple of questions though. Um, you mentioned and sorry if you mentioned this or. It was implied. I didn't. I missed it. The uh, you mentioned an integration with the Phi driver core. Does that yeah. mean that when you turn off the Phi, the Ethernet power goes away as well, or is, are those independent? Uh, for now, I think if we turn out the yeah, if the Phi driver gets down, yeah, it will turn out the yeah. That, yeah. That, that makes sense. Um, it's also really cool. It's, it's integrated with regulator framework. That's that's good. Um, your port power priorities in, in the future, are you mm -hmm. planning on adding that support via a uh, Netlink API or via ETH tool or something different? I think the Netlink API is a yeah. Yeah. straight sure. choice. For sure. Um, the, I'll, I'll be interested to see how you solve the like port identification and, and how that, that looks. But uh, yeah, we, should, we should talk more. And then the last question is there's a third poe chip uh the from linear um the ltc 4266 i think it's know. uh it, okay oh, cool well, I'll, I'll look at your your work when it's merged which looks it's looking pretty good okay um, thank you and uh maybe add support for that that chip says as soon as i can find a public posting of the data sheet which yeah is the blocking thing mm. at the moment mm. um but yeah awesome good work thanks thank you
Yeah, 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 if you have more information of this controller, maybe it could help because there is only two and uh, see the whole other things I made, so it could help for yeah. the development. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's just an AF controller, so just the, mm. the first, or no, sorry, it does type 2 up to the 30 watt or 25 watt. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's old, but still. Yeah. So that's why the data sheet should be available by any time. Um, but yeah, cool. It's good work. Thank you. In your demo, you used uh, YNL. Do you have like patches for ETH tool to make it like more? Uh, yeah, patches are, are, are already done. I think I, it's on my GitHub, and I will push it to us till uh, when the when the basic will be accepted in Mail Linux. Okay. All right. Thanks. No more question. I think I will let you go to lunch. <laughs> Thank you.